think that it's easy to be resentful of it sometimes because especially for me like it created a little bit of an imposter syndrome, especially since this fame and all this stuff happened when I was so young. I was like, is this happening because I'm worthy of this and creative enough for this? Or is it happening because there's like a team of producers making something happen for me? Today's guest is someone who I've been looking forward to talk to for at least 15 years. In 2006, she became well known after being cast in the reality show The Hills. Since then, she has continued to expand her empire and reinvent herself not only as a fashion icon and designer, but as an entrepreneur who has successfully created, built and run multiple businesses. Her current projects include her YouTube channel with the popular The Hills Reaction videos, her vulnerable and encouraging podcast with Wit, and the clothing line Love Wit. Please welcome to the podcast, the style icon, the entrepreneur, creative director and designer, Whitney Ford. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Of course, here. my pleasure. Oh my God, you have no idea how much this means to me. Aww, I grew up you. watching The Hills. Yeah. And I remember we connected a couple of months ago. Of course. And I told you how I came across The Hills reaction videos mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Or uh, not even on YouTube, on Facebook. Yes, because, yes. Yeah, because you said that it's like it's, so many people. I know. It's all of a sudden people are finding us through Facebook, which is awesome. We decided to invest a little bit into that. So also for like any entrepreneurs out there, definitely like don't disregard Facebook. But yeah, I'm so happy that you that found me again. I was, of course, really happy to see that you are still around do, doing really good. Thank you. And, you know, your family is just like like absolutely beautiful thank you and <laughs> watching the reaction videos brought me back to my 18 and 20 year old self yeah I remember back then thinking oh my god how fortunate these guys are yeah we because were really lucky yeah you were mm -hmm. lucky not just because getting this opportunity but also finding your purpose at totally. such a young age totally yeah I mean I think that if you had a clear idea going into it of what you wanted to do, then it was a great exposure for you to allow it to find your purpose. Like for me, I knew before going into the show that I wanted to be in the fashion industry. I had grown up in the fashion industry. My dad was in it. And so that was my goal. So I went into the show knowing that I was going to utilize the show to further my career in fashion. And that's why it was a really positive experience for me because I really had like a clear goal. It wasn't like I was just trying to be on a TV show to be famous to cause drama to get my name out there like I knew what I was doing this for what I was thinking while getting ready for this interview mm -hmm. is that <clears throat> what happened leading up to the cast mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. getting cast to that role so basically it was all very organic mm -hmm. I was interning one summer at women's wear daily which is a daily fashion newspaper and it's now all digital, like you don't get delivered it anymore. But um, I was interning and I had heard about a job opening at Teen Vogue, which was the level above us in the same building. And I was starting college at USC, University of Southern California, which is in downtown LA in the fall. And I thought this would be great. I could ha apply for this internship um, and go to school. And so I applied for the Teen Vogue internship, just like a regular, student you know and next thing I know I get a call from MTV producers and they're like we're going to be filming a TV show with Teen Vogue and we saw that you applied for the job we're wondering if you would do a casting tape for us and I was like what like what kind of TV show you know and reality TV was I don't want to say new but it wasn't as around as it is now you know especially docu type of mm. series it wasn't as popular so I didn't really know exactly what kind of tv show I was getting myself into long story short I did the casting tape they called me back for like a first day of filming where I had my like real on-camera interview with the editor of Teen Vogue where there are cameras everywhere and I'm sitting in the lobby waiting for my name to get called and Lauren Conrad walks in and that's when it clicked for me that I was like oh I'm on her spin-off show because I had watched Laguna Beach I knew who she was 
So I, I didn't know. I just knew I was like kind of auditioning for a TV show, but I didn't know the magnitude of what it was. And then I got the job. Like I got the job at Teen Vogue and um, – I was obviously cast by MTV and chosen by Teen Vogue for this job. And then the rest is history. Wow. So it was like really organic. Like it wasn't like I was sending in my a casting tape to producers or like, you know what I mean? I, it was really like I wanted this job in fashion and it was right place, right time. Yeah, but you said something very important. You wanted a job in fashion. Yes. I think for me, it was like very streamlined. My dad was in the industry. He w ended up being in the fashion industry, like mass market, producing T-shirts, sweats. Um, so I worked in the summers, like in his office, just learning the whole industry. And my mom was really creative and she was an art teacher. So like, co like, combine the two you know my mom being creative and my dad being in the industry I just grew up with that sense of like understanding of it and loving it and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do in fashion you know I didn't know if I wanted to be in PR I didn't know if I wanted to work for a magazine I didn't know if I wanted to design but I knew that I wanted to try out all the different things and then see what I was most passionate about and with the show like I got to do exactly that and my parents were really 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 supportive of everything like I grew up in Los Angeles they were around the industry like they weren't in the industry but they were around it I went to a private school uh, like I was never phased by Hollywood or like really trying to be like I said famous so They trusted me to do this. They raised me right. They were super happy. Like, I had a really, really, really great childhood. Um, and they supported that path that I wanted to take. They were never trying to carve out a path for me, you know? It was never, like, the lawyer, doctor. Like, it was always you create your own destiny. And they just gave me a lot of freedom. So I'm so grateful for that. Did you have any idea what you signed up for? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. like I when I got cast I I knew it was a reality tv show but I I essentially knew it was going to be like Laguna Beach was you know I was like okay they're following Lauren from Laguna to Hollywood they're just probably going to show like what her life looks like in Hollywood and I'm going to be her co-worker so like Yes, I had an inkling of what it was going to be, but I had no idea what it would turn into, you know? Like, I I didn't know it would be this, like, reality TV phenomenon at all. Um, but, yeah. And for people who have never been a part of a reality show, yeah. how would you explain that experience behind the scenes? Behind the scenes. So... It's like essentially you're you're filming for let's say three months um, and then there's like two weeks at the end of maybe pickups once they've like edited everything together and they, they need to fill in some holes and so they have you like reshoot scenes and have conversations about stuff that's already happened but for the most part basically the producers meet at the beginning of the week and they kind of look at what's going on in each of their cast members lives and they create a schedule um you're filming it depends who you are what cast member but like lauren main character of the show is filming probably like i don't know like a full-time job you know like eight hours a day maybe like five days a week um for me they would for with the hill specifically i was a student and that was my first priority and they always knew that but they would call me to come in on thursday or friday and shoot for like three to four hours each day uh depending on whether we were in the office just shooting something or at a photo shoot or whatever it was but That's kind of what it looked like for me. But the producers, they knew going into the season what kind of stories they were going to start following. And then as they were following them, real stuff would happen. And then they would go along with what real stories were actually happening. But we never had to do like confessionals. That was the other thing. We never had to do like reality shows now. You know, they have you sitting in front of the camera and like talking about what happened. We never had to do that, which was a relief. But also... In that way, you didn't really get to explain yourself after the fact. So there was a lot left up to the watcher to, you know, uncover what was happening. You didn't really get to speak for yourself, which now you get to, you know, you get to say a lot of stuff after the fact. So 
even just by listening to you, what yeah. I understand is that reality TV has changed a lot. Oh right? my God. Yeah. It's, it's changed so much. And I think that it's, it's, it can be a lot more manufactured now, unfortunately. Um, and the Hills definitely was manufactured to a certain degree. It has to be because the only way that you can really film like a TV show that has real shit going on all the time is if you're there 24 seven, like if you're on the real world or big brother or whatever, where you're like, that's where when you can capture real stuff going on. But if you're not filming like that, then yeah, you have to have plans for what you're going to film. But I think with reality TV now, um, just so many people are doing it for the sheer reason of creating drama and it's not real drama that happens in real life it's just drama to create drama for a show and I don't love that I want to see real shit go down you know what I mean yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I love reality tv honestly like I still watch it and I'm like I'll ask my husband because he was a producer on, on reality tv and I'll be like do you think that was real? Like, it, you know, and I still, I always want to uncover, but it's, it's, I, I love it. And that's why we do our YouTube series. I mean, honestly, COVID happened and we were like, what are we going to do? We have to create something and we want to have fun doing it. So we started rewatching the Hills and it was just so much fun. Like it took me back to that time of my life. It made me remember so many things and be grateful for so many things. I think I've forgotten about a lot because so much happened so quickly. I really forgot about so much that happened. It was a way for me to be like, oh my God, like that makes sense. That's why this happened. And like I should reach out to this person and it just like gave me a newfound appreciation for what I do. Yeah. yeah. So it's like probably a healing process for you. Oh uh, yeah, so much. It's been so cool and I've like yeah become just so grateful for it I think that it's easy to be resentful of it sometimes because especially for me like it, it created a little bit of an imposter syndrome especially since this fame and all this stuff happened when I was so young I was like is this happening because I'm worthy of this and creative enough for this or is it happening because there's like a team of producers making something happen for me so now I can look back on it with like a more mature point of view and be like, okay, yes, certain things were happening because producers were creating stuff for you. Like you moved to New York because someone offered you a spinoff show, right? Like you move, you got this apartment in New York, someone found it for you, MTV was paying for it, you know, like the DVF job, they had the connection, but I'm like, fine but I still was myself through that journey and maintained those connections and like proved myself while I was working and so I had I, got, I was able to see that and I, w I was able to be like proud of myself for that yeah it's so good yeah. that you're talking about the imposter syndrome because even in your case mm. it's something yeah. that is I was just thinking about it it's possibly was there yeah for sure yeah and um how would you describe the journey of overcoming your imposter syndrome um i would say a lot of it has been reflection and then now it's like um i try not to look so much into the past anymore like i try not to harp on it too much because i think that sometimes when you tell yourself the same story over and over you really start to believe that story so I start to really just lean into the gratitude of the show and like how how much more good came from it and and look at who I am now and how I can like continue to make a good impression on people and help people. And I think that a lot of that is like been through my podcast and been through leaning into my motherhood journey and to really being vulnerable and connecting people connecting to people in that way as I was doing my research what stood out that Kelly Cotrone yeah. is still in your life yeah and back in my life now yeah. oh back in your life yeah okay. she was like we had a little bit of a falling out, um, like a business thing, and it was silly, but it, emotions were running high. Um, and, but I just recently saw her at Fashion Week and went to one of her client's shows, and it was as if nothing had changed. And okay. she was such a positive influence on me and really pushed me out of my comfort zone so many times. And I think it's so important to have someone like that, like a mentor or someone that can really help you, like – just not be afraid of of failure 
Yeah. yeah. So that's how you would describe your relationship with her, right? Like, yes. Like a mentor figure. Yes, yes. And I really want to lean into it more too because I trust her point of view so much in terms of like putting yourself out there and not being afraid of what anybody else thinks or says. And like also just staying in your lane and kind of keeping your blinders on and not focusing on what everybody else is doing. And I think she's really streamlined there. Like she's just always been like that she has conviction like she knows what she wants and I I honor her confidence and like always want to soak that up yeah so yeah. this is something that you'd like to learn from her and, for sure yeah. yeah and I think I'm learning as I get older how important it is it is to have those kinds of people in our lives women men whoever it is like it's so like great to have that wisdom from someone who has been through it because I think like we question ourselves so much so 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 much like unnecessarily much and I think that sometimes like a little bit of the wiser generation can put things more into perspective for us yeah you know just like how I could to someone who's just about to have a baby you know, it's just there's a different level of space from something that you have after time where you can be like, OK, uh, it's 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 just great to have that point of view. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And what about those times when you didn't have that kind of supportive mentor figure in your life? Mm -hmm. Um. I think I felt that way a lot, like after my dad passed away. Uh, he was really that person for me, mm -hmm. both in my career and in my personal life. Like, he was that special person that I just felt so comfortable with. I would – I remember living in New York. Like, he was the one that I wanted to call at the end of the day and, like, tell him everything that happened, you know? And so – that was really hard for me to not have that sounding board anymore when he passed away. And I think I relied a lot on my husband and uh, probably too much for a while. And so I've had to kind of make clear boundaries there because I never want to like take advantage of someone. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what you can put on a parent is totally different than what you can put on a husband. And I think that like your husband or your partner is not just a punching bag. So now, yeah, I've had to, like, there's always a little bit of a hole, don't get me wrong. Like, I feel like that that space can never be filled by anybody, but um, I do try to, like, seek out those people in my life who I can turn to when I'm just like, oh, God, I feel so lost. You also mentioned that you worked with your father. Um, what did you learn from him that makes you the businesswoman you are today? I I mean, I learned everything from him, but I think the biggest thing is his ability to make connections with people beyond just it being a business relationship. And that can be really hard. So I'm not like the biggest networker, you know what I mean? Like I'm not the kind of person that wants to go out and sell myself and go to the parties and do the things. And like he wasn't really like that either. And I've learned that there's a way to do it in a real genuine way where you don't have to do that if it doesn't feel right to you. He was just like always very inquisitive about people and when he had business relationships like built them beyond just the business relationship you know he was just so friendly so charismatic so easy to work with like a yes person wanted to find a way to get things done not like oh you know da -da 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 -da. it could happen like this maybe he was just like yeah well, let's let's figure it out and i think that that charisma and ability to like be a leader is something that I, I I hope that I can emulate and like I think about a lot when I'm trying to yeah to be a boss yeah yeah, yeah. because you know at the end of the day networking is really about how you can give value to others and right I think that's exactly what you do right yeah. it's not like you know it can be so much it feels like in any industry it's always like everyone's like what can you do for me and I get stuck in that too sometimes I'm like what you know of that of that balance but I think that it is so important to look at it as like a, 
a give and take situation. You just never want to feel like you're taking advantage. Um, and yeah. You had so much control over your early 20s. Mm -hmm. And now you can do whatever you want and you're building your business on your own terms. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the journey of leaving that control behind and finding out who you are when no one is trying to tell you who you are? I know. Um, I mean, it's honestly been so freeing and I'm so grateful that I had that in my 20s to be able to now just like carve my own path and like try a bunch of things and just like throw things at the wall and see what sticks like I'm so 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 grateful but I feel like it's still it's taken me time and I'm still evolving I'm not I'm nowhere near where like I want to be and I, I don't mean that in that like I'm I'm hard on myself and I'm not proud of myself like I am I there's so much of what I'm doing right now that is so like beautiful and amazing and I love but there's so many other things that I want to do and I think that um it's it's just in terms of finding myself I just think it's like I never feel like I'm I know this may sound weird to say but never feel like I fully know myself like I feel like I'm constantly evolving um if that makes any sense yeah, of course it does yeah it does <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you have such a great partner in life, your husband. Yes. And I watch so many of your videos. And what stands out, again, is that he's so supportive. He is. And he helps you to be more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure how to say it, but come out of your shell, yeah. if it makes sense. Yeah, he does. How would you describe your relationship uh, in like a work-related setting? Yeah, I mean, he gives me so much confidence. And I think a lot of that, you know, a lot of that has to do with I think him a little bit taking on like a fatherly role for me and trying to boost me up in that way. I mean, a partner should do that no matter what, but I think that Timmy has done such a beautiful job of realizing kind of what I'm missing in a dad and like being that for me. Uh, work-wise like supporting me in what I'm doing and helping me and lifting me up and then yeah in just in life like giving me the confidence and telling me just to be myself and telling me to give myself more credit and not talk down to myself like he's yeah he's just a wonderful wonderful partner and the best thing about him though is his humor like for me humor was always number one when I'm when like I need someone that's going to make me laugh beyond anything like I think that that's just something that will stand the test of time yeah. and he just I think he has the ability to do it in such yeah such like a kind-hearted way I just I yeah. adore him. Yeah. Yeah. You just said that you sometimes talk down to yourself. Yeah. Does that ever uh, often happen? Because, you know, sometimes I do that. Of and course. I'm sure that many people like what's your way of getting out of that? So I feel like I've tried through and this may sound like super cliche, but I feel like I've tried through meditation to just work on being present and just focusing in on what I'm thinking thinking and being in charge of my thoughts not letting my thoughts just run wild and so now I, I it's like working out a muscle it's like when I start to talk down to myself that muscle kind of turns on and it's like wait a second you can control this like why are you talking down to yourself there's no reason for that let's find how to like talk to yourself in a way that's constructed and get yourself out of this place so yeah I think it's just really about being mindful of when you're doing it and kind of like reprogramming your brain to get out of it yeah what I yeah. really enjoy about your communication on social media is that you're really vulnerable mm -hmm. and it seems like you are so honest and it's not something that you are just doing because that's what people want to see yeah you're no. doing it because that's who you are it, yeah yeah can yeah. you talk about that journey of becoming this open because I'm sure that after your experience in your early 20s Probably you maybe would want to be like closed off. Yes. I know. It's weird. So my my journey with that is strange because like when we started doing the hills, I didn't want any of my personal life shown. Like I was a student. I had I, I was just like living a college life. I had a boyfriend that didn't want to be on the show and like my family was off limits. So that was cool for me because I could have like kind of two separate lives. 
And then when the city started, they were like, well, the show's going to be about you. So we need to open you up. You're going to have a boyfriend. You're going out, job, friends, everything. It's like kind of centered around you. So I was like, oh, my God, like that doesn't feel natural and like that didn't really feel natural because there were editors that were editing me into a way that like sometimes I didn't really see myself and there was all sorts of things happening on the show that I just felt like Ugh, this isn't really a reflection of what's what's really happening so when we when social media started and we started to be able to be in control of the narrative and who we really were I started to gain more confidence because I was like, I'm putting myself out there and people are actually like feeling similar, you know? And I think that really started when I did my YouTube series, I Love My Baby Butt, which is something that Timmy really influenced me to do. I was having a really hard time with pregnancy, feeling very negative thoughts towards it, complaining to Timmy. And he was like, if you're feeling this way, other people must be feeling this way. You should talk about it. So like reluctantly, I got in front of the camera and he filmed me and we talked about it and I rewatched, he edited it and I watched it and I was like, we cannot put this out there. Like women are going to go nuts, you know, women that can't get pregnant, women that are just going to feel like, ew, you're so privileged and whatever. And you're complaining about this, like this is a gift, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, I thought about it for a while about putting it out. I was like, is this really what I want to do? Like I'm opening myself up in a whole new way that I've never really done before. I hadn't been that vulnerable before. And after a little while, I was like, okay, let's just do it. Let's just do it. This is how I'm really feeling and I'm not a bad person. So it just like, it can't be possible that I'm the only person feeling this way. So I put it out there and it was like amazing like the it was like oh my god I I this is how I felt too and I've had no one to talk about it to and I don't even really want to talk about it to anybody but just the fact that you're saying it makes me feel better and not alone so that then gave me the confidence to like continue on that path of vulnerability and really just be myself and I think that if for anybody trying to follow that kind of path of sharing their story, that it's just so important that they're telling it, that, that, that they are themselves in it, that they're not doing it for any other reason than to just like share a, a unique point of view. Um, so yeah, that's why now I feel super comfortable because I built a community of really like supportive people and, um, that and I I yeah I like I'm so lucky that that's happened for me with social media because that's rare you know yeah yeah, yeah. and it's great that finally you could just take control over the narrative exactly it feels really freeing it feels really freeing and now you know, too, I have to set boundaries. Like there's certain things that I, I don't share and that's fine. And like, I'm not one of those people that's going to post all day long and share what I'm up to, what's going on all day long. That's just not my style. I pick and choose and, um, I, I use it as a platform to share like what creatively I'm doing and what socially we need to be doing. But other than that, I'm not trying to be like super self-indulgent with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what advice would you give to people who have no idea how to draw boundaries on social media? Because, you know, it's so easy to just go crazy and share everything. I mean, like, I think that you just have to understand that when you are putting vulnerable things out there whatever you get in return you need to take with a grain of salt to really like not take the comments too 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 seriously um that you know if it is too much and if you feel like it is having an effect on your confidence in any way you start to question yourself to really then put the boundaries on how much you share because more importantly is like your like your privacy your um your mental health obviously and being in charge of your narrative and not letting other people control your narrative so 
Yeah, boundaries are super important. Yeah. yeah, probably without boundaries, you wouldn't even be on social media. So for sure, yeah. For if there sure. was like a management company who would tell what you can do and what you should do, it would be so different. Oh right? yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, even now, I'm starting to get to the point where I don't even really like showing Sunny that much anymore. Like, I show him like pictures, cute pictures of him, but I don't really want like to be videoing him all the time or I just don't it's it's starting it doesn't feel comfortable um so I lean into that and I'm like okay this may affect my business a little bit you know obviously my managers and agents want me to share more the more you they, they think more and more and more the more you share but like I think that I'm okay with the level of exposure that I have right now and what I'm able to do career-wise. I'm not trying to sacrifice that much for anything more. Yeah. Not worth it to me. Yeah. yeah, and that's I remember when we talked, we had the, um, the consulting session I booked you for, and uh, you were there with your eye patches, and I'm like, it's so freeing to see someone doing that because yeah. that just means to me and signals that – yeah, you are comfortable, you are confident, and you know who you are, and you are just not putting on makeup or whatever just because of me, and it's not a sign of disrespect in my, no, it's, it's more it's like, I know who I am. Yes. Yeah, it's just comfort, and yeah. I think it's, I mean, of course, how you present yourself to the world can say so many things, um, but I think it was, it's frivolous and unimportant. And I think that like, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm saying yeah. that you are, you are the person who you portray yourself, like yeah. even behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So you are not someone who's just trying to look some, someone like, or something. Yeah. And like, that go even goes with my podcast. Like my, my agents are always like, film video of it like put out video you know and, and for me sometimes I feel like I have better conversation without video so I choose not to do it and I think that that's you know you can make those choices for what works for you and create the content that works for you and do you think that we ever 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 change to just like start maybe filming? yeah I think so um I think as I grow and become more confident in myself for sure but sometimes I feel – well, I, and also to have a place to go to. Granted, I could go to our studio, Dear Media, shout out. But, like, we – I'm building an office. Um, we're renovating an office space, and I'm building, like, a little recording area. And then I'll invite guests and, like, film it and have a whole setup, and it will be easy. But right now I just don't have the, the space to do it. Yeah, because yeah. you need a space where you can feel comfortable. Yeah. And it's not controlled by anyone. Exactly, right? exactly. Like sometimes even, yeah, going into a, an office, or it feels sterile. And so for me, yeah, I'm excited. I'm like creating a little cozy with like bean bags and pillows. And it'll be like a little cozy space for us to have the conversations in. How your priorities have changed since having Sonic? Um, so much. I mean, you wait, the first thing that happens in the morning when you wake up is your, is your, your kids need, you have to tend to your kids needs, you know? Um, so it's all dependent on their age right now. We're in a good spot where like, yes, the mornings are all sunny. It's like getting him ready for school and packing his lunch and getting him out the door and that whole thing. And then and then you can focus on yourself, but then it even feels a little bit chopped because you have the, you're then starting your day at 10 and you're like, wait, but I want to work out. So it's, it's, you, pri you have to shift your priorities and you have to block things off and block time off for yourself and stick to that and be consistent, which is something I have not done um, lately. I'm, I'm like starting, I told myself I would start this week, but like I, yeah, it's it's really hard to make yourself a priority when there's uh, obviously a little human that's like depending on you and you have a job where you need to be on and support it. But I think that it's like I said, you just have to put in those few moments throughout the week where you're focusing on yourself, whether that's therapy, whether that's moving your body for a little while, whether that's um 
getting a manicure pedicure, you know, whether it's like listening to your book on Audible, what, whatever those things are, I think you need to figure out how many of those moments in a week you need and make those happen for yourself in order to show up in the best way for your family. And uh, what advice would you give to people who would like to build a stable, sustainable career like yours? I think that it's important to land on what, first of all, makes you the most like alive. I think that you, in order to have like a sustainable career that you, that makes you happy, you need to focus on what actually makes you happy and go for it in that arena. And whatever that is, I think it's important to start connecting with people who you admire, who are in a, in the space that you want to be and start figuring out what your path to getting there is and like really trying to set goals for yourself um but i i think that it's it's important to have a resilient attitude to understand that you will probably get a lot of no's and probably so many times you will feel like closing the door but I believe that if the passion if you if someone else can feel the passion that a door will open um and I also believe in manifesting and like visualizing things um visualizing things going a certain way I believe in the power of that completely and uh, what is your secret of being relevant after so many years? Oh because, my God. you know, so many people cannot do that. No, I don't really feel that relevant, honestly. Really? Yeah, like, I, I don't. I feel like, um, that's a good question. I, I just am constantly trying to do new things. And I think that that's a good way to evolve and to do new different things and that I'm just interested in that like for me I went from fashion design which is something that I'm so lucky to be able to continue to do with rent the runway in that way but also I uh, we're renovating this house and so now I can really dig into interior design which still I'm able to like flex that design muscle but it's a completely different art um, and so I think just being able to dig into different realms of like my creativity has allowed and then share it on my platforms has allowed me to like stay stay connected to what's happening. Does that make sense? Yes. It yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. But there's something that I couldn't really find information on social media or on Google even. Yeah. Uh, but it was in your bio that I got yesterday. Yeah. And um, it was the fact that you also invest. Oh, yes. I didn't know yes, that. Yes. Can you talk about this Oh, my a God, of bit? course. Yes. So, so, yeah, Timmy and I have been, you know, really, like – interested in that obviously in finding companies that we're really passionate about and we feel fortunate that we're able to invest in them and help them realize their dreams but we have some really great companies that we've invested in um parallel which is a women found in company and they do multivitamins they started doing it for women at all different phases of pregnancy like first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, postpartum. And then now they've dug into more like for PCOS support. They do a men's multi. They do just a women's multi. They're really just focused on creating vitamins for you at a specific phase in your life because we all need different things at different phases. And then there's another one um, called Bachans, which is like a Japanese barbecue sauce, which is amazing. And, and like – different but something that we love and use in our house all the time and Timmy's a big cook and loves to use it and then um Julie which is a um another a morning after pill um that's starting to roll out at like all targets and also like women founded um so really cool Bumo which is like a child care center um they also have a really big digital presence but 
um, supporting women in work and creating child care. So just really, yeah, cool companies that either like peers or um, – or people that we've just reached out to. Oh my God, you should use another hair care company, Day, D A E, um, uh, co founded by Amber Filler Up, like a completely natural, clean hair care company that smells amazing and sustainable. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm like, it's so fun for me to do this um, and to be able to like have uh, like a little bit of, a say in each of these different realms it's just so interesting to learn about how also each of these different companies work and how these industries work yeah yeah and uh i like how your eyes light up when yeah you talk it's about been so this. fun it's been so fun yeah. yeah and probably you've learned a lot about investing as well right mm -hmm. so much i mean like i think that if you're in the place to invest um it's important to think about just like a budget per year that you want to. You know, I think for us, we think about like a certain amount that goes to charity and then a certain amount that we feel comfortable investing. And I think that the main thing that we focus on is if we are we really organically like believe in the mission and the product and would use it. You know, it can't just be like some good idea from a friend. It has to be something that really like we feel it works in our lifestyle and so that's the thing that's that's what I think is important um but yeah and also knowing knowing how much you want to put towards that and knowing that like probably most of them are not maybe gonna work out but like there could be that one that makes up for all of them you know so it's really about being realistic about it too while running a business I can imagine that you have to learn about so much not just about the investing but social media or yes. everything yes what was it? What, what was the journey for you? Was it difficult or did you have help in yeah. the beginning? Um, I mean, it's been such a journey. I'm definitely. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like I'm like a Jane of all trades because like I have to I do I have to read contracts. So there's like the the agency law side of it. There's like the investment business piece of it. There's the social side of it. There's the producer like producing content side of it there's the like leader boss side of it there's the on-camera personality there's the fa fashion personality like there's so much you know so I'm I'm constantly learning it's a lot for me to juggle I feel like I wear a lot of hats but I have like amazing people that are super supportive one person in particular Annie who's on my team who's like my right hand woman who I rely on not only for just like the logistical stuff but also someone to keep me like positive and um and like excited for what's ahead and um yeah, it's it, it, I also have to be patient with myself and know that things are not just going to come easy um, and, and, and to lean on people too, to lean on people for help because I think people innately do want to help and I think you have to people give people that credit. Uh, yeah. The last time we talked, you mentioned the business coach that you are seeing and working together. Yes. Um, what I would love to know is like, is there something, some specific thing that you realized about yourself or about your business since you work with that person? So I, for me, she really allowed me to open up and think about how like how I really want to put energy out and create as opposed to just deal with like everything that comes in you know and that can even uh, just mean like it's like logistical stuff like I was talking about like running a company in in and of itself is its own job let alone what the company actually does you know and what the company actually creates and how they stay fresh and they stay new so I think I've had to really focus on that what is your go-to solution whenever you get overwhelmed or when, whenever you feel like it's just too much? Yeah. Um, I When I feel like it's too much, I talk to Annie. I think it's it's been so important for me to have a team member to rely on that can kind of like help me organize my priorities. 
because for me, Annie knows what's going on in my personal life and what's going on in work. And so I would just say, like, find yourself an Annie if you can. Um, that it can really help you organize, like, okay, this is what's actually due today or needs to happen and is urgent. Um, and so once you get that done, focus on what you need to do personally to like feel whole and okay. And so I just take it like one day at a time, honestly, like really one day at a time. Mm. And it's 2023. Yeah. You run an empire. (laughs) And, um, what I'd love to, I'm stopping it again. That's okay. Totally not an empire. From the outside, it seems like Mm -hmm. it's 2023 and you would say that probably it's not an empire, but from the outside, it seems like an empire. It's crazy to think that. It's really not like a little mini like fake cartoon one. Um, Oh, my God. It's I'm it's so I feel so lucky to be able to do what I'm doing, but I still have so much more that I want to do. Okay, and what are you the most excited about? I'm just so excited to finish this renovation project, honestly. Like, I want to get in there. It's going to be our new headquarters. I want to have a space to do all of this in. I want to have a communal workspace to actually be able to, like, create and, like, have that energy of people around. And Wait, does that mean that you work from home? Yes. Okay. Yes. I work in our guest room right now, and it's just, like, overtaken with stuff and equipment and clothes and everything it's a lot it's a lot and so I'm yeah I'm so excited for that um and we're on the home stretch there I'm I'm so excited for really like in my personal life Sonny's about to finish preschool he's going to kindergarten next year we're going to spend the summer actually on the east coast which I'm really excited about um and gosh um yeah I'm like what else so much so much so yeah just happening yeah yeah but it's wonderful to see like even you catching up with Lauren Conrad and yeah Catron. I watched these conversations and listened to them and it was just like such a great moment of it's just like seeing you talking to them and not carrying things with yourself no yeah. I feel like these people are such important people. They've had such an impression on me in such a positive way. And uh, whatever feelings, any negative feelings that I've had have just have not been worth it. Like our roots go back so deep and we've yeah. been through something so unique together. And I respect them so much. So I've it was so cool to connect with both of them. I was I felt so grateful. Well, it's felt so grateful to Lauren to do it. Um, and yeah, Kelly immediately when I reconnected with her in New York was like, I'd love to do your podcast because Kelly, I mean, she's a publicist, you know. Yeah, of course. But um, yeah, it's been it's really cool to still maintain those yeah. relationships. I love her style. She's she's like, so cool and like classic just, edgy yeah. New York. Yeah, she doesn't take any bullshit. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, I have one final question. Yeah, left. yeah. And this is a question that I'd like to ask from every everyone. Okay. What success mean, meant to you when you were 20? And what, how do you define success today? That's so funny. Like, I feel like success for me was like getting married and buying a house. Like, that's as far as I got, you know? And I think that success to me now is being able to like live comfortably and do what you want to do when you want to do it like own your time that's what it that's what success feels like to me like I feel uh, right now the freedom to do what I want to do um, and create and create my own schedule without someone telling me what I should be doing and like that's everything Uh, So, yes, like I'm so grateful for the house and the husband and the family. And that is like so part of my success. But 
um, career wise, yeah, I would say just the ability to to own my schedule. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. This was so great. You asked such good questions. You asked such good questions. And I felt like so comfortable chatting with you. I loved it. Thank, Thank you so you. much.